I'm Priscilla Archangel, and my leadership insight for you today is recognizing emotions, preparing to return to the workplace. It's May 2020, and all across the U.S., the Save Lives focus is shifting to save the economy. Several states are venturing forward by opening public spaces and business-to-consumer locations as we try to maneuver through this pandemic. Corporations are using a multi-pronged approach to prepare the physical environment based upon data, building standards, logistics, and artificial intelligence. And all of this while accommodating a variety of personal needs to enable organizations to be fully functional. Meanwhile, employees may find themselves continuing to work from home on a part-time basis, performing different job functions or confirming their health status before they enter the building. More importantly though, employers will find that they have to prepare the emotional environment as employees return. Because some employees have in essence been through a nightmare, driven by sickness, death, needs of family and friends, changing work needs, emotional adjustments, and financial issues. Though many people are thankful for whatever resources they have, they face a future full of unknowns and a feeling of insecurity that they just can't shake. And they'll return to the workplace bringing these emotions related to three factors. The first is experiences with COVID-19. Some have dealt with personal diagnoses or the diagnoses of a loved one. And there are lingering after effects of the illness which still haven't been fully documented. The second factor is adjusting to those experiences as everyone's emotional and mental health is impacted. Grief has been a major issue, not just as a result of the death of others, but general emotional and financial losses that have occurred. A recent survey by Qualtrics and SAP showed that in March and April 2020, 75% of people feel more socially isolated. 67% report higher stress. 57% are more anxious, and 53% are more emotionally exhausted. These employees need a greater level of support to be effective in their roles. Number three is personal needs that must be met in order for employees to be able to focus properly on the job, particularly wanting to ensure the safety and security of their family members and that children are educated properly, among other factors. And while leaders aren't expected to turn into therapists, there are certain steps they can take to recognize the different needs of their team members and provide space for them to adjust. Leaders and teams may benefit from a discussion prior to re-entry to the workplace to talk about what that will be like. Questions to ask may include, what has been most challenging for you over the past several months? Or what was the silver lining for you over the past several months? What creative talent did you uncover or develop? How have your priorities shifted? What do you need now in order to operate at your maximum potential? What does our new normal or our abnormal look like to you? What have you learned over the past months that will help you to improve our work? And that's just a starter list of questions. Leaders need to both listen and share their own responses. So as employers continue to develop their plans to call employees back into the workplace, it's important to understand that emotional considerations marked by uncertainty and insecurity will be present. Talk with your employees. You can't solve it all, but keep talking with them. And there's a familiar saying, employees don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Thanks for listening.